Welcome back with a smiling face. Links to previous episodes are given in the video description, so don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video. Chapter 61 to 65. What fate would look like? Wondered just how long that wolf had been with Izzy. She herself had not sensed anything different in Izzy, not till today when she'd woken up. It likely happened on the full moon, hadn't shifted yet though, but Piper was willing to bet that would happen before the next full moon. Those bright blue eyes of her wolf, that was a curiosity, most wolves had green, though pure blooded alpha wolves had red and she had seen yellow before, and hers were white. Wondered what other colors were out there and what they were indicative of. She'd never seen blue, was betting fate was going to be something special. Walked quietly along behind Bradley, Harper was lying inside her mind, head on her paws just watching, seemed somewhat interested but not interacting at all. Still not willing to voice her opinion. Piper was not going to push her. She'd talk when she was ready. Watched as Bradley put Brandon down on the waist-high fence and then explained as he pointed out all the different things on the agility course, the hurdles to go over and the low hurdles to drop under, the tires to be stepped in and out of, the climbing wall and the obsile that was needed to come down the backside, the wooden walls of varied height that had to be jumped up and over or scaled if you were too short. The very steep mud slopes of a pit to go down and try to get back up the other side a good 20 feet either side. Monkey bars, and rope ladders that had to climbed up and over and down the other side. There were four of those dotted around the course, all with different tensions to vary the degree of difficulty. The climbing ropes and then the final army climb under bamboo rods which turned into a giant mud pit when wet. Brandon was fully excited by the course was itching to get out there and give it a go himself, even though he was way too small to hit those climbing walls and hurdles, looked right at her all pleadingly, when Bradley told him he was too young for it. Wondered if she should allow it and say yes. She'd used it from the age of ten and wasn't all that big, as long as you were careful it was all right. I guess you can try some of it. Walk it, Eddie or your father can go with you. She finally stated. She saw Bradley's eyes turn to her. She could see he clearly didn't like the idea. I'd rather he didn't Piper, he is way too young. He wants to, she stated simply. Rarely did she deny her boy anything. Still. Bradley frowned at her. If you won't, then I will she stepped forward I lived on this thing from the age of ten so I don't see why not. What? Both Bradley and Eddie stated together, sounded completely shocked. I also doubt you hold the record she shot at him. Harper and I likely still do. Saw Bradley's mouth fall open as she walked round the fence and passed him. Come on Brandon she reached out for him. Wait, a compromise instead. Bradley said putting a hand on her arm to halt her. Eddie and I will run it, Brandon can watch. Piper looked at Brandon, he was pouting about not being able to get out there, but then nodded. Brad, we are not exactly dressed for this it was Eddie. Shoes and shirts off Gamma. Bradley wrapped out an order show your mate just how good you are. She looked right at Edward, he was grinning now shucking off his shoes already. He liked that idea, obviously Bradley knew what buttons to push. Piper sat herself down, leaned back on the fence and motioned for Izzy to come sit with her. She did, pulled Brandon into her lap. She knew Bradley was likely to win against the Gamma, his alpha wolf would be stronger and faster. Whispered into Brandon's ear tell them, no wolf assistance. Saw the boy grin, then he yelled out Dad. Both Eddie and Bradley were headed over to the start of the course. Bradley turned and looked at the boy, a smile on his face. He clearly liked how Brandon called him Dad. Yes son, he called right back. No wolf assistance. 
saw Bradley's eyes flick right at her, still wasn't used to him actually being able to look right at her. Although he'd been doing it now for a while, it still felt weird for him to be looking directly at her with purpose. He knew what Brandon had said was all her idea. Heard Edward burst out laughing, he also seemed to get it. A fair match it was now. Let's just see who was better in agility. It was now possible for Edward to actually beat his alpha. Count it out Brandon. Bradley called once they were over at the starting line. The boy did, called out loudly, counting backwards from five and then yelled go Eddie. Saw Bradley nearly stumble off the start line at the realization that his own son was going to be cheering on the Gamma and not him. Piper couldn't help but chuckle at that, as did Izzy. She even heard Harper snort with amusement inside her mind. Watching the two of them, they were evenly matched without wolves, it seemed. Piper popped Brandon into Izzy's lap when they were about a third of the way through the course and got up walked over and turned the sprinklers on, to make it just that bit more difficult, saw them both turn and look at her, she tipped an imaginary hat to both of them and went and sat back down. The last part of that course was an army crawl under those bamboo rods, and now it will be a mud pit when they got to it. Heard Harper actually chortle inside her mind, she was fully amused now, it seemed. Mum. Brandon asked looking at her. More interesting this way. She smiled down at him. Will I get to do this sometime? It is likely, but there are rules as to the age you can, you're not old enough at this point she told him and he wasn't. So I have to wait until I'm ten, he sounded very unhappy. Thirteen actually she informed him. What? But you said you were ten. Yes. I had no one to tell me no she shrugged and she didn't. Heard him mutter, that it wasn't fair, saw Izzy hug him, she could likely sneak him out here and let him walk it with her assistance, though how Bradley would feel about that, when he found out about it. Wait till he leaves for a meeting. Harper piped in. M.M., could work. Piper agreed with her. Watched as the two hit the crawl a 100-foot-long crawl through the mud, under those bamboo rods, a tight squeeze for both of them, females not so much. Their smaller builds were more suited to this part of the course, which allowed for the woman to catch up and overtake some of the male warriors. She herself didn't have any trouble with it, was only tiny in frame. Brandon was up on his feet now, yelling for Eddie to move his backside. Izzy stood up and picked the boy up, and they were both cheering for Eddie to win. Saw Bradley emerge first but barely so. Eddie was killing himself laughing when he got out. He'd lost but was fully amused by all the cheering he was getting, it seemed. Watched as Bradley shook his head and then shoved the man over and back into the mud, when he got up, Piper bit her lip fully amused you should have let Brandon walk it she told him. Does he not know who he's supposed to cheer for? Bradley asked as he stepped up to her. They were sitting at the finish line, and both she and Bradley watched as Edward got up from the mud once more, waved his muddy hands at both Izzy and Brandon and then fainted at them. The two took off hand in hand laughing and Edward was chasing them a second later. Piper and Harper snorted as Edward caught up with them and rubbed mud all over the two of them then just picked them up one under each arm like they weighed nothing to him, carried them back to the mud pit and tossed them both in, laughing himself now. He does, just, Piper looked up at Bradley, he was covered from head to toe in mud himself, you wouldn't let him on the course she shrugged. Saw the man huff and shake his head. The sprinklers? You though that would be funny did you? Perhaps, she nodded. I should toss you in the mud, Brad commented and eyed her off like he was really thinking about it. Piper raised an eyebrow at him. I probably wouldn't if I were you. Hmm you didn't beat my time, just so you know. 
Brad POV Bradley was happy that Brandon allowed him to carry him all the way to the training grounds. There was a large fenced area for hand-to-hand -hand combat training, which he used for his wolf-on-wolf -wolf training as well. There was an outdoor Olympic swimming pool for endurance training where 50 laps had to be completed without rest. It was hard going for some, but others relished it. And there was a running oval where sprints and long distance running were complete for the unrealist wolves. Once you got your wolf running was done in the woods on one of four dedicated training tracks. He and Benson were very happy that Piper had given them this opportunity to bond with Brandon, and knew she had done. Piper had told him that it wasn't up to her to help him formulate a bond with his son, but she was actively encouraging him to spend time with Bradley. Bradley took his time in explaining to Brandon how the course was run, wanted to stand and bond with the boy, and was more than happy to stop his explanation and answer any questions he had and then continue on. Was horrified to hear Piper state she'd been using this course since she was ten, so was Eddie by the sounds of it. Wanted to ask her all manner of questions about how she managed to do that without getting caught, but had the feeling he wasn't going to like the answer, so he left it for now. The compromise he made was a way of stopping Piper from taking Brandon out there onto the course. No one under 13 was allowed on it and then there were strict rules and full supervision and not just with one or two trainers on for each child. He did not want Brandon climbing all over it at this age. Regardless that he was an alpha child, and had a half-realized wolf. That climbing wall was a good 20 meters high, with an obsile drop off the back of it to get back down, as were all the climbing ropes and net climbs, this course was designed with fully realized wolves in mind. There were no safety nets here, a fall from that height could not only injure a child, could cause death. Telling Eddie shoes and shirts off was also a win for him. Piper and Harper, not that they had seen Harper at this point, but Benson could sense her now through his mark. She was there, he believed, would get to see him shirtless. He was an all-muscled-up, well-defined man, he had broader shoulders than Eddie did, was a few inches taller as well, an imposing man to look at could look very fierce if he so chose to. Bradley wanted to show her how fit he was, how well built and strong he was. It was a little vain he knew, but most wolves were ripped and muscled up. Most she-wolves loved that, and the more muscular the more, that they tended to like it. He was hoping she was no different. Had lived here most of her life, was still a she-wolf regardless that she lived with just Harper inside her mind, no shifting. Bradley also wanted Piper to feel like he was solid and strong, someone that she could rely on to protect her and care for her. He had all intention of ripping through this course and leaving Eddie in the dust. Benson, too, was all for showing his mate he was fast and strong. They had shown him up on the endurance run but he would show her he was the fastest and strongest here in the pack. Both he and Benson were really happy to hear Brand call out to him dad, warmed his heart and filled his wolf with pride. Couldn't help the smile that graced his face at that one word. But knew it was all Piper's doing, that next sentence, no wolf assistance, as did Eddie, who promptly burst out laughing. This pitted just the humans against each other, the woman he thought was trying to annoy him now was actively trying to find a way to make him loose on purpose. She had told him perhaps he shouldn't always get what he wanted. Maybe this was her way of doing that. Eddie found it highly amusing. Was shocked completely and nearly came to a standstill when Brand cheered for Eddie. Was that also her doing as well? He didn't know. But he was going to loose now. It just pushed his determination up several notches, he was not going to be beaten by his gamma with his mate and son watching on. No, he was the alpha and he would win this race. When the sprinklers were turned on and they were drenched in a matter of seconds, both he and Eddie halted on their way up the rock wall to look at what had happened, only to see Piper tip an imaginary hat to them. 
It made Eddie chuckle as he started climbing again. She's playing with you he smiled at Bradley. What? It was more like toying with him, he thought. Challenging you. Likely her way of playing with you, just go with it, she seemed amused earlier on the way over here. He hauled himself up onto the top of the rock wall right after you said you hold the record. So she doesn't think that I do. Eddie laughed right at him no she does not. And he was gone off down the obsile. Brad followed. As they hit the next obstacle, he'd thought about that. She was fast back in Sydney. She thinks she holds it, Bradley commented as they dropped down into the now mud pit of the final army crawl under the bamboo rods, that last part of the course. I'm guessing so. Do you think it's possible? Completely, who knows how often she was on this course unsupervised, over what eleven years. Could have been daily for all we know. A really good way to get frustration and anger out. I've been known to come out here when cranky and run it with all the sprinklers on as well. Bradley did know that about the man. Didn't like that Eddie was keeping pace with him while chatting away without any issue at all. It was Eddie who ran the agility course for training. Whereas Brad focused on training his warriors in hand-to-hand -hand and wolf fighting. Wondered if Eddie was actually holding himself back a little, Brad was only on this thing every third day but Eddie was on it every day, he trained all the juniors in how to use it properly and then was here to check the top warriors, give them a good challenge which Brad knew he could do. Bradley managed to crawl out first, but barely so, was up and on his feet like a second before Eddie was. Although Eddie had been laughing for the last half of that army crawl, he could hear both Izzy and Brandon cheering for him and had commented fully amused about being the boy's favorite. Was still amused even though he didn't win. Shoved that man right over and back down into the mud, the minute he was on his feet, for his amusement and comment, about Brandon liking him more. Annoyed Brad more than a little. Though he was not angry or upset with him. He was actually happy to see Brandon so excited while out in the pack. He also knew that Brandon had bonded with Eddie. He couldn't help but smile at Eddie as he was chasing both Izzy and Brandon around, fainting at them with his muddy hands all stretched out. Bradley had actually seen him do this with Harry's pups before. He was a natural with the pups. It didn't surprise Bradley all that much that the man had connected to Brandon and quickly. It was good, was the boy's first real wolfen interaction without any aggression at all. Not once around Brandon had Eddie so much as lost his temper, or even gotten annoyed, as far as Bradley was aware. Likely never even frowned at the boy, the man knew what he was doing, and had gained Brandon's trust easily, it seemed. Could hear his son laughing as the three of them were throwing mud at each other and then Izzy and Brandon were climbing all over Eddie to hold him down and rub mud all in his hair, was calling him Uncle Eddie. That was new. His eyes moved to Piper as if she'd know the answer to his unspoken question and she just shrugged, and said Izzy's mate. Aunt Izzy, Bradley had commented, as he recalled that's what the boy calls her so Uncle Eddie. Yes. Piper nodded simply. Didn't seem phased by it at all, he noted. You're okay with this? It's fine. Are you not? She asked right back. No, no. It's all good. Bradley assured her and it was, the boy was enjoying being here. He'd liked the park and played with some of the other kids, had started calling him dad and now he had an uncle. He was assimilating quickly into the pack. This was a good thing. Just needed Piper to come around fully now. Though if she had been playing with him, as Eddie suspected she was, this was also good. Perhaps she would be open to being here sooner than he'd hoped she would be. The mud on his chest was starting to dry on him, irritating him a little. I'll go and hose off he told her. 
He called out to Eddie clean up Eddie and watched the man pull both Izzy and Brandon from the mud, they were covered from head to toe, all three of them. He walked over to the washdown area and grabbed one of the hoses hanging from the wall, each one had a shower head attachment and all were hooked up to both hot and cold water for the different seasons. Made sure to turn the hot tap on and get the temperature, not too hot for the boy but warm enough like a shower. He didn't want the boy freezing out here. It was only 11 degrees or thereabout, this was the average temperature for the month. Hosed himself down while the others walked over, then washed all the mud off Brandon. Eddie was doing the same with Izzy. He turned to go and get towels from the storeroom only to find Piper walking right towards him with towels, hadn't forgotten where they were kept, it seemed. She tossed him a couple of towels, and then wrapped Brandon in the one she was still carrying. She only glanced at his body briefly, he noted, then kept her eyes firmly on their son. Smiled to himself, their bond was not only still intact but half realized, she was wearing his mark and the longer it was on her, the more that mate bond would pull her towards him. Wondered if she'd had to stop herself from looking at him. He himself did not need the push. He already knew if she was and he'd likely be on her, his hands would be all over the woman, he wanted her. Had already seen that woman in gym gear. She didn't look it, in her work wear, but under those clothes she had on was a very lean, and well-toned, lightly defined six-pack and V-line. It was not so overdone like some of his female warriors. Bradley found Piper very attractive, it was a shame that those golden brown eyes of hers, never smiled up at him, not directly anyway. He'd seen her smile plenty with Brandon and Izzy, but never at him, for him. Still had to work on that. Today had gone better than he'd hoped for, better than he had planned. She not only listened to him but had talked to him about her lineage. Bradley knew he was supposed to let Annabella do that. He'd thought and still did that it was better coming from him, so she understood that he did know about her type of wolf. Now the fun she was letting Brandon have, to see here inside the pack. Bradley knew that Piper had meant what she'd said, that she didn't want Brandon to want for anything, she would give their boy everything, even if she didn't like it herself. She had seen how happy and excited he was at the park, had expanded on that just to see him even more happy. Though her being here, because Brandon wanted to be here, still bothered him, knew she likely meant that too. Which meant that he now had to be careful not to get the boy to tell her to stay. He wanted Piper to make that decision for herself. Wanted her to stay and be his mate of her own free will not just to please Brandon or give him what he wanted. He might have to sit down with the boy and explain it to him, so he didn't just unwittingly tell her what he wanted, to get his own way. He had no idea if the boy or his wolf knew just how much pull they had on their mother and her actions or reactions, for that matter. They all walked back towards the pack house once all the mud was gone and towels were wrapped snugly around Brandon and Izzy. Piper I have put you and Brandon in the Luna's suite. It's across the hall from my room. He knew she knew where his room was, just hoped she was all right with this. She didn't say anything at all, just nodded her head, she was holding Brandon's hand the entire way, he would be too, but the boy was holding his towel closed so he couldn't, but he was walking on the other side of the boy. They would look like a family walking this way. It made him happy, Benson too. Seems his wolf was also happy with the day's interactions. Though Aspen was asleep currently, it might change when he woke up. They walked into the pack house to find Lily and his father, Benjamin, coming down the stairs. This would be the first time he'd seen them since their arrival. They both smiled at Bradley, then he saw his father's eyes move to Piper and then the boy. The man looked very happy that she and the boy were here in the pack, but it was Lily who spoke first. Bradley, you haven't seen your sister Hadley now, have you? 
missing again it seems she shook her head a little. What? He huffed, annoyed with the girl instantly. Sorry not actually missing, just ignoring everyone I guess. Oh, he calmed down. She's having boyfriend trouble apparently, Cooper was handling it. Apparently, the wolf is paranoid about my reaction. What boyfriend? His father interjected. I know nothing about this. I only found out myself today, it's only recent, I believe, Cooper said just after she turned 18. Hmm, I bet he's paranoia is well founded. You are very protective of your little sister. Lily nodded. Let it go, I'll talk to her myself later, now please. Explain to me, why you're all wet. She frowned at him and waved her hand at Brandon and Izzy more specifically than he and Eddie. Mud fight. Eddie chuckled. Bradley shook his head. Piper wanted to show Brandon the agility course, then she turned the sprinklers on us while Eddie and I ran it for Brandon to see. Heard his father snort with amusement, I like her, already son saw the man turn his eyes to Piper. It's good to finally see you sweetheart. Saw her just stare at the man and say nothing. He would have been her alpha for the most part of her life here, wondered what feelings she had towards him. Did she blame him for anything? It was possible. His father seemed to understand and didn't push it. Turned to Brandon and hunkered down now I hear, you are big and strong already, beat two of the alpha unit already in a running challenge, beat them good and proper. I did. I beat Uncle Eddie and Harry. Hey. I mowed a rematch, Izzy tricked me into getting off that treadmill. Eddie stated. I still won. Brandon poked his tongue out at him. You did indeed, young man. Stepping off a treadmill is as good as giving up. Now come here and give your grandpa a big hug he held out both his arms to the boy. Bradley watched as Brandon actually took a step towards his mother. He might be willing to talk to the man but was not ready to hug a complete stranger after two minutes of conversation. He saw her hand slide through the boy's hair, a comforting gesture he thought. Not yet ready. Bradley commented quietly, motioning for his father to get up. He didn't want the man pushing the boy. Well, I guess I am a stranger to the boy. He huffed as he stood up, but then smiled down at Brandon what about dinner in the private dining room? All of us together. Bradley looked at Piper. He had no idea if she would be comfortable with that. We'll see, perhaps tomorrow father. Give Piper and Brandon a chance to be a bit more comfortable. Saw his father nod and then turned to walk away. Now Bradley, about Hadley's boyfriend, some slack when you meet him. She is an adult now, you know. If he's game to meet me, Bradley snorted. Likely thinks I'm going to beat him senseless. Heard a shocked gasp knew it was from Brandon and realized what he'd said in front of the boy. He looked right at him I would never do that Brandon. He told him quickly, just an expression is all. He added come on let's get you upstairs a warm shower or bath and some cleaner dry clothes. He could have kicked himself for that comment, he was trying to make the boy more comfortable with him but here in the pack he had fallen into his alpha mentality and stated what was completely natural for him, beating someone was part of his job, how was he going to explain that to young Brandon, if he'd grown up here he would know this already and it wouldn't be a problem. The school here taught not only human world subjects but ran wolf and society classes as well. He would learn all about who was in charge and how packs ran, who punished who and what crimes were punishable that the Alpha Wolf was not just the leader but expected to beat and punish those who needed it. Not that he would actually beat this wolf, who was Hadley's boyfriend. A stern talking to would do, though he didn't know who the wolf was at this point. Didn't seem that anyone did but Cooper. Would have to talk to that man. 
would hunt him down after his own shower, actually hadn't seen Cooper since Hadley had stalked off away from him down the Alpha Corridor away from him, was likely attending to pack business, he knew the man was capable and was handling everything so that Bradley could focus solely on Piper. Was thankful for that. Could well be in Helena in the office for all Bradley knew. Chapter 62, Piper POV The Luna Suite Bradley had walked her and Brandon right to it, they'd taken the elevator to get up here, not something she'd ever done, always just walked the stairs, she knew where it was, had hated seeing the words on the door, had learned to not look at the door at all, pretty much just refused to acknowledge it existed after a while. It had just been another reminder of what she'd never be. He'd opened the door for her and Brandon, swiped a card over the lock, just like in a hotel she supposed, that was new, just had regular door handles the last time she'd been here with keyholes. Must have upgraded everything. She did note the pack house looked slightly different, more modern than before. Brad had replaced all the windows and flooring, and noted there were shutters outside. Likely to keep the winter cold out. He'd handed her the card, and smiled at her. She knew, as the Alpha, he would have his own, a master key to access every room in this building. There was no point in locking the door, it wouldn't keep him out. Though she was fairly certain he could likely lock her in if he so chose. He did not however, enter the room, just ushered her in and said to take their time and warm up, then stepped out and closed the door. She heard the lock click, shook her head. Turned and looked at the room. It was designed like a large hotel suite, she thought, with a deep plush-looking couch and matching armchair. They were both in a cream suede material and they had green throw pillows on them. There was a fireplace with a large wall-mounted TV above the mantel. Had a very nice and sweet, all-white marble with a few decorative long narrow jewel green-colored tiles that ran down from the ceiling ranging from a quarter to halfway down the walls, kind of brought to mind dangling vines, she thought absently as she filled the massive soaker tub for Brandon. He was sitting quietly waiting, he did seem a bit cold to her, but he did only have a towel on, had already peeled his wet clothes off, it's like a small pool, mum he commented. Mm, it does it could pass for a small plunge pool, she thought. My bath is not even this big. That it is not, Piper acknowledged, his bath was not even half the size of this one. And the one in her own end suite back in Portland was not half the size of this either, though her bath was a luxury she'd given herself, the only one thing she allowed herself really. Hop on in, she said when it was full. I'll leave the door open, to listen for you. All right he'd nodded and hopped in, the water level came right to his shoulders when he sat down, it was filled with bubbles it's so deep. No silly business, she commented. But relax and be warm. It's toasty warm already he grinned up at her. She stepped out of the bathroom, leaving the door open all the way. He could swim but still she would keep her ears tuned to him in there, make sure he was safe. Walked herself over and sank down on that plush-looking couch, it indeed was soft and lush to sit in, leaned back into it and looked at the rest of the room, only one large bed in here, up against the far wall, though she could see that a single bed had been brought in, and not just some trundle bed either, a proper single bed. Bradley's son would sleep comfortably, it seemed. She sighed to herself and knew why this room was a one-bedroom suite, most alphas would not have a Luna with a child already. So no need for other bedrooms. It was tailored to a single woman, not a single mother. Wondered if she could be moved out of this room and into another. There was not enough room in here for her and Brandon. As much as she loved him, she liked having a room to herself her own quiet space. Otherwise, things felt crowded, shook it off and got up. She could only ask, though it might not go down so well. 
walked into the closet and found all her clothes were not only neatly hung and folded but were all ironed and pressed, as were Brandon's for that matter. The weather here was cold, being so close to winter. And in this closet were clothes designed for the warm summer that had been approaching in Sydney. They had no winter wears here. Got out some pajamas and laid them on his bed for him. It wasn't all that late, only just coming up on four in the afternoon, but she was not intending to go roaming about, was starting to feel tired already, probably should still be in the hospital, not fully recovered, she supposed. As for that family dinner offer, she had no intention of doing that today, was not at all ready to deal with that. Though it did appear Bradley seemed to understand that, hadn't pushed it and had said as much. Piper could hear Brandon splashing about in that bath, playing some imaginary game like any seven-year-old would, shook her head and smiled to herself, just knew there was going to be water and bubbles all over the floor in there, the boy it seemed, was more than comfortable right this minute. Not relaxing either, wound up, and energetic still. Went back and got him some proper clothes out. He was not going to want to be in pajamas or want to crawl into bed at this hour, though she could feel that big bed calling to her and Harper, it wasn't just her who was tired she realized. Harper felt exhausted to her. They were still recovering from the blood loss. Though she couldn't feel Harper healing her any more, that might be why her wolf was so very tired. Took the opportunity while Brandon was in the bath to have a look at herself, her injuries. There were no massive amount of horrible scars that she could see, though she still had staples in one of her arms and along her side. They were no longer necessary, plucked them out, a short sharp sting as each one was removed, shook it off. Did have a few fine scars, though they were thin and white already, likely mostly healed on their own before Harper had woken up. Patched up before leaving Sydney, by Cooper, she imagined, he'd done a good job of keeping her scars to a minimum, though whether he'd been trying to do that or not. She doubted it. Would likely have been a rush job to stop the bleeding and get the heck away from vampire territory. Not much she could do about them. What was done was done, she had not wanted to fight, had told that stupid woman as much, moved her eyes to her neck where she had been fed on. A savage bite, shuddered as she recalled the feeling of those fangs digging into her to feed on her, not something she ever wanted to feel again. The skin there was scarred, that creature had bitten hard and it looked to have torn some of the skin away dragged its fangs down her skin as it had staggered away from her. Had a permanent reminder, she supposed, nothing she could do about it, two puncture marks and the slightly torn skin below, might lighten up with time, who knew. Her eyes moved to the other side of her neck, where she had been marked by Benson. Silver filigree adorned the crook of her neck, didn't recall how that had felt at all, no memory of getting that. It seemed to be made up of interconnecting swirls, though she could actually see what looked like the pack symbol in there, shook it off. That was nonsense, but frowned and looked closer at it in the mirror. And there did seem to be a moon-like shape outlined by a thin silver swirl that joined to a filled-in swirl of silver, that looked much like the lake of the pack symbol, it could be she supposed. Turned away from the mirror, let it go. There was no kitchen or even kitchenette here, not even coffee-making facilities. There was also no food in this suite, or snacks of any kind, frowned and then sighed. Knew why, so that they would have to go and eat downstairs in the pack house dining room. There would be no holing up in this room. Though surely she could order stuff to the room, she doubted that anyone would say no to her. Not with Bradley's mark on her. She was hungry, turned and looked around the room, there was no phone in here to connect to the kitchen, huffed and reminded herself she was not in the human world anymore, that wolves within packs didn't need telephones. They just used their mind-link ability to talk to whoever they wanted and get what they wanted to their room. 
that was not going to happen. She was not part of this pack, so had no way at this moment to contact anyone. She'd not pledged loyalty, he may have marked her, but she was still considered a rogue until she and Harper either pledged loyalty to him or marked him back, she supposed. Didn't really know. Mom. Her eyes moved to the boy, she'd not heard him get out of the bath. Lost in her own thoughts, it seemed, not a good thing with him being in the bath and all, would have to rein that in. Sorry Brandon, what did you ask? Nothing, you were zoned out there, that's all. I'm actually a bit tired. Piper told him honestly go and get dressed. Do you think that TV has all the channels like in the hospital? Yes she nodded. No PS5 mum. She looked at him, had no idea what had been packed and brought here or not. Yours could be in a suitcase. Get dressed first though she commented as he headed toward the open walk-in closet. He pouted right up at her then set it up if it's there shook her head on the bright side Brandon, your friends will be awake to play with you more, from here. Oh, I forgot that he grinned. She knew it would make him happy to hear this. He was gone to get dressed and then sat and watched him drag a suitcase from the walk-in and open it. Sweet, it's all here. He was already pulling it out to set it up when there was a knock on the door. Watch him actually run over to answer it, she let him was too tired to bother, was likely only going to be one of three people. But internally sighed to herself, assimilated very quickly to being here, he had wanted to know what a pack was like. He'd told her as much, and had asked her to go and have dinner with Bradley. Took all of one day for him to be comfortable here, saw the boy smile right up at his father, saw Bradley smile right back at him, seemed he was very happy with the boy's reaction to him. And why wouldn't he be? Hi Dad. Hi son, what are you up to? I thought, his eyes moved to Piper we could take a look around show you about the pack house. Mum can I? Brand looked at her, seemed excited. If you want to, Piper nodded, but didn't get up from her place on the couch. Saw Bradley frown instantly at her. I'm actually tired. She answered him before he made some comment about wanting her to go as well. She knew from his frown, that was what he'd been going to state. He had used the word we and he'd looked right at her. All right, it can wait until tomorrow. He nodded Dr. Samuel, did tell me you'd be a bit tired for a day or two watched him step into the room, look down at Brandon are you all right to wait until mum's feeling better? Yes, was going to set up my PS5 anyway. Go do that then, he tousled the boy's hair. There is no food in here. Brad she commented, oh that was weird using his name for the first time right at him. She shook her head a little, she was going to have to start using it at some point, especially if Brandon was going to want to be here all the time and it did certainly look that way. Found his eyes right on her, it was not missed on him, that this was the first time she'd called him by his actual name I know, this sweet he looked around is not designed well for our situation, I'll have some brought up. What would you and Brandon like, he sat himself down on the couch. If I had a phone to the kitchen I could get whatever I want, whenever I or Brandon are hungry. Saw him lean right back into the corner of the other end of the couch and look right at her or let me initiate you back into the pack, and you can mind link to anyone you like, order food at will. Don't push me. She glared right at him. Could feel Brandon's eyes on her, turned to look at him and sighed. There had been a bit of anger in her tone and she knew it. Aspen might be sleeping but that didn't mean he wouldn't wake up, if Brandon got upset. It was a suggestion, Piper. I'm not going to force you. I told you I would give you time. I meant that. She really wanted to comment about that. It had not sounded like a suggestion to her, 
she'd barely been awake twelve hours and he was already wanting to initiate her back into his pack. He'd said he'd give her time, but he hadn't. Was still pushing to get what he wanted quickly. Not only had she woken up here inside his pack, she was marked by him as well. Yes, he was going to give her the time she needed. Not. Set up Brandon, it's fine. I'm just tired, therefore a bit grumpy. Piper commented don't wake Aspen over it. All right, but you're not going to fight with Dad are you? Closed her eyes, it was entirely possible if he didn't stop pushing her she might just punch him with all Harper's strength right in his stupid face. But she would contain that until he wasn't around. No, Brandon, she said, instead it's been a long day. I didn't appreciate the comment was all and she had not. Twelve hours. Yeah, that's giving her all the time she needed. Why did you bring me here? She turned her eyes to the man in question. To your pack. You needed a hospital piper. There would have been more than one in Sydney, I'm sure. Saw him frown you needed a pack hospital, not a human one. We left in a very big hurry, due to not wanting vampires to come and attack us, we'd have been completely outnumbered and quickly so. Piper could not argue with that, just sighed I'm hungry and tired she told him. What would you like to eat, he asked simply. I don't really care, to be honest, I eat pretty much anything. I don't want vegetables. Brandon piped up showed he was listening to them talk. Hmm, you never do. Piper shook her head, and yawned. She really was starting to feel the pull of sleep, it was dragging at her quite quickly. Maybe. Just sleep would do her. Brandon, why don't you go with your father to get food she offered? That should make the man happy. Piper. It was Brad. I'm really tired, you go and eat. She told her and yawned again. He was suddenly right in front of her piper. He sounded worried. Looked right up at him, and Blink didn't realize he was so very close. She must have shut her eyes for a moment, a micro-sleep, maybe go, I'm fine. I'll call the doctor, perhaps you're not ready to be out of the hospital. His hand touched her face. Shoved him away from her. I'm just tired, you yourself said the doctor told you I would be tired for a day or two. I don't know, you're practically falling asleep while talking to me. He frowned at her as he sat next to her. Piper got herself up, realized Harper was actually asleep already. It's been a long day, emotionally and physically, Harper is exhausted. I think it's just spilling over to me. Are you certain? You lost a lot of blood. Brad was also on his feet now, frowning down at her. I'll be fine she waved him off go, take Brandon and get him some dinner, I'm going to lay down for a bit. He stood staring at her for a very long time, like he was trying to assess her or something watched his head tilt slightly and realized that was exactly what he was doing, he was using his wolf senses to check her heart rate and breathing you don't have any pain he commented. Not a question, a statement. What, no. I know, I'm just stating a fact I already know. And how could you know this? Piper raised an eyebrow, though she really just wanted him to leave so she could lay down. Because Piper, I feel it when you're injured, knew you'd busted your knee before you told me you were injured. Felt every hit from that vampire and even felt it feed on you. Set Benson off into a massive rage, lucky he stayed inside of me, in his rush to get to you. She was just staring at him now, a deep frown on her face, she didn't understand that, he'd not even had proof of who she was to him hadn't scented her at the time. I'll let you rest, but I want Dr. Samuel to check you over first thing in the morning. I'll stay with Brandon till bedtime watched him turn and pick up the boy and say come on, 
let's go get an early dinner and let mum rest. Did not know what to make of all that he'd said, but was actually very tired, changed into her pajamas and crawled into the bed. It was soft and comfortable, curled around a pillow and allowed sleep to claim her. Chapter 63, Piper POV Piper woke up to a darkened room. She was feeling completely hollow to the point her stomach was actually aching right that minute. Heard Harper whining inside of her mind, could feel her pawing gently at the edges of her mind. They were starving hungry. She'd not eaten dinner, crashed out not long after Harper herself had. Now it was late, in the middle of the night. Food. Harper told her. Agreed. Piper answered that ache in her stomach was horrid. Starving. Harper piped up again. She turned her head as she sat up in the bed, could see Brandon was sleeping there in the bed next to hers. Even noticed he had his pajamas on, looked about the room. There was no one else in here, Brad must have put him to bed and actually left the room. She was thankful for that. Got out of the bed. They should have left something to eat for her, surely. Turned the lamp by the couch on and looked around. No food still, not even snacks or fruit, sighed and shook her head. So much for that, she had told him. There was no food in here. Thought Brad would have left something for her to eat. Clearly not. She was going to have to go and get something herself though she did not want to leave Brandon alone in this room. What if he woke up? Would he get scared or panic that she wasn't in the room? Piper did not know the answer to her questions, food, I'm hungry. Harper huffed at her hesitation to leave the suite, and as if on cue, her stomach growled loudly at her, bit her lip. What to do? Food was a must. Harper had been healing her all day and was in need of energy right now. It was their hunger pains that had likely woken both of them. Was going to have to risk the trip to the pack house kitchen. Well, at least she knew where it was, and at this late hour there would be no one around either. Not that Harper seemed to care or be concerned at all right this minute about running into other wolves, her hunger was outweighing everything else stood at her bedroom door, as she opened it quietly, glanced back at Brandon to make sure it hadn't woken him, flicked the door lock to stay open so she could get back in, quietly, and then stepped out into the hall, the decision made to go and find food which they would bring back and eat in the room. Anything would do, just grab whatever she saw, regardless of what it was. There was no one out in the corridor, the lights were off bar to one at each end of the hallway, Bradley clearly wasn't concerned about her running away or coming to any harm. Otherwise there would have been some sort of detail on her. Closed the door with a quiet click. Heard the sound of a door opening, she bit her lip. Perhaps she was being watched, turned in the direction she'd heard down the corridor to her left. Stood and stared at the sight of Hadley coming out of a door down there. Hadn't laid eyes on that girl since the day in the alleyway. Realized it was the beta suite she was coming out of, she was carrying a pair of shoes in one arm as she stepped right out of Cooper's room, looked to be sneaking out, in fact, her hair was messy and she was just wearing a t-shirt. Saw that girl's head whip right around, her eyes wide though she did not look directly at Piper, but at Bradley's room instead, and it dawned on Piper. She'd been told she smelled like Bradley, his scent was now hers. Hadley had smelled Bradley and that whip of her head was because the girl was sleeping with the Pax Beta and she thought her brother, the Alpha, had just busted her coming out of Cooper's room all disheveled and likely smelled like him too. Piper just stood and watched till that girl's eyes found her in the hallway. It didn't take long a few seconds, saw her bite her bottom lip. Piper had heard the comments about Hadley having a boyfriend, that the wolf himself was paranoid about the Alpha's reaction to her new boyfriend. Yes, 
it was very likely that Cooper was highly paranoid about Bradley finding this out, and he had good reason to be. He was doing his own Alpha's little sister. From recollection, she was just on 18 and Cooper was the same age as Bradley. Oh, the man had every right to be concerned about his Alpha finding out. Raised an eyebrow at the girl, but said nothing, saw Cooper a moment later step into the doorway of his room, still buttoning up his pants, looked right at her, frowned at her in fact. It was pretty clear that neither of them had been expecting anyone to be out here in the Alpha Corridor at this hour. Watched with full curiosity as the two of them looked at each other, likely having a quick conversation via the mind link as to what they were going to do about being caught. Then Hadley glanced at her and hurried off down the hall and disappeared down the Omega stairs. Cooper was walking right towards her inside Piper. No, I'm hungry and so is Harper. I'll get you something, but we need to talk he commented, and opened her room door. I don't care Cooper, she commented softly, not wanting to wake Brandon. What you do or who you do it with and she didn't. What others did was none of her business. So you won't, say anything. He asked just as quietly. No Piper shook her head that is your problem to sort out. She now understood why he had been in the hotel lobby talking to Hadley on the phone, hadn't wanted Bradley to overhear whatever it was they were talking about, likely lovers talk or something like that. Good was all he said on the subject. I'll go and get you something to eat. Be quick. We're starving, no dinner. Right. He nodded and was gone. Piper was curious as to how long that had been going on. They were obviously not mates, there wouldn't have been an issue if they were, their relationship would just have been accepted by all. She could well imagine that Brad wasn't going to be happy about it, and that's why no one knew about it. Why her boyfriend Cooper was paranoid, he was going to get him kicked when Brad found out. Cooper came back in record time, less than five minutes. You might want to shower. You sent of Hadley she commented as she took the plate of food. Hadley had been missing, well unreachable, cutting of mind links to her during the afternoon. She'd not seen Cooper all day either. That was odd for where the Alpha went so did the Beta normally. Unless that man had been with Hadley all afternoon. He was frowning at her as she stood looking at him, said nothing for a long two minutes while she stood and ate a pear. You really won't say anything. Nope, not my place too. She shrugged and saw his frown deepen as his eyes moved to her neck. Ah. She was marked by Bradley, the Luna so to speak. It was her place. I don't care, Cooper she shrugged and closed the door on the man. She didn't particularly care either was not going to involve herself in that man's mess or Hadley's choice of lover either. She didn't know them, or how their relationship had come about or when it started. Certainly had not been out there in the hallway looking or snooping around, had come across that little scene by pure chance, it was an accident and nothing more. But she was willing to bet those two were going to be more than paranoid about her outing them to Brad. Hmm. She had leverage over the pack beta and an alpha at that. That was an interesting turn of events. Sat herself down on the couch with the plate of food. There were several pieces of fruit, two sandwiches and even a piece of cake. Looked like he'd just grabbed anything and shoved it on a plate, like what she had been planning on doing. Looked at the clock. It was just after 4.30 in the morning. Ate everything on her plate, it was likely that the Alpha and his unit would get up for training at five, even though it was dark outside and likely bitterly cold, wolves ran hot, so they would get up and train regardless till the snow started falling. Cooper and Hadley had been cutting it close to getting caught by their Alpha, she supposed, though they might be counting on him being distracted by having Brandon and her here. Bradley had certainly gone out of his way to tell her and on more than one occasion he wanted her. 
though he was unhappy about the way she'd been marked, he was not going to take it back, would not be accepting a rejection from her. Got up and lit the fireplace, it was a bit on the cold side in here, stood and let the warmth from the fire relax her. Harper was settled now she had food in her belly. Wondered if Brad would let her go and buy warm clothing for her and Brandon, though she did not believe he would let her outside of this pack at all, especially with Brandon. No, that man was probably expecting her to try and leave the minute she was healed up, so he was unlikely to allow her to go into Helena and do some winter shopping. Likely thought she wouldn't come back at all. Sighed she had three businesses to run on the West Coast. How was she supposed to do that from here, had a home out there in Portland? Brandon had school and friends out there as well. He had told her that he liked his friends. Wondered what she was going to do about all of this Harper. She asked her wolf. Harper's thoughts and opinions needed to be taken into account, she'd lost the ability to shift from their life here inside this pack had not wanted to come back here any more than Piper herself hadn't. I don't know was the reply. You have a preference at all. Though Piper knew her wolf had been quiet the whole time here, she also knew that Harper had also been watching Brandon with Brad, and she'd actively watched Brad on the agility course. Hadn't felt pain at seeing him either, not like she normally would, that is new to them. Not really. Waiting on Aspen, Piper thought to herself. Brandon was clearly happy here. Just one day inside the pack and already happy. Sighed, thought it would have taken more time than that. They must really have bonded on that plane at some point. Aspen, however, from all reports, was not happy. If they were a rogue pack as Brad suspected, then it could very well be likely that Harper was indeed waiting on Aspen's decision. If he said no it was going to be a no from Harper, that much Piper was certain of. Brandon got up at six stretched and yawned before getting out of his bed. She smiled at him from the couch. Sleep well. Yes I did. He smiled back at her dad said you were out cold, though, though. She prompted him. He sounded worried about you. I'm fine. I was just tired is all. He hugged her. Aspen is really happy that you're okay, just like me. He's awake. Yes, slept all afternoon and night. How often is Aspen awake? Piper asked him. She'd been meaning to ask him that question for a little while now. Most days now. It used to be like two or three times a week, but now it's every other day or every day now. It kind of depends, I think. On what's going on around you it wasn't really a question, more of an observation. Yes he nodded. You might want to talk to Aspen about your father. Why? Why? He picks you up all the time and from what I heard, Aspen might not like that. Oh. All right. He nodded and hopped off the couch and ran for the bathroom. He came back and climbed back onto the couch next to her, happy it seemed like normal hay. You ate breakfast without me he pointed to the empty plate on the coffee table. I did not, that was a midnight snack. I woke up starving, you she poked him. Didn't bring me any dinner. Oh sorry. Hmm. Starved me she flopped down on the couch. I nearly starved to death, pushed herself up a little and then flopped back down but on top of him this time my own son, starving me. He was laughing and shoving at her you were sleeping. Oh, she feigned horror, I nearly fainted from hunger threw her arm over her face. Oh the pain and suffering, my own child, starves me. Mum. He laughed down at her. Piper smiled up at him and made herself comfortable, her head in his lap. Refused to move at all when he pushed at her. Just smiled. Mum, I can't reach the remote. 
he was trying to get the TV remote off the coffee table and couldn't not with her on him. She reached out for it herself, feigned not being able to reach it either, moom, he whined, and she accidentally on purpose knocked it off the other side of the coffee table and onto the floor. Oh the horror, she laughed, neither can I. Started laughing even more when he squirmed and really started trying to get out from underneath her. She squirmed and wriggled just as much till he was practically in hysterics over her antics. Even Harper was fully amused and chortling inside of Piper's mind. Then they were up and had the boy pinned down on the floor as he dashed off to get the remote, and he was a little ball of arms and legs squirming everywhere trying to get away. Pinned him right down and blew the biggest raspberry on his tummy stop. He was yelling at her while laughing. Never. She and Harper stated together, fully amused. They did so love to tickle their boy and hear him laugh. Well, good morning, I see. Piper's eyes lifted up and she found a smiling Brad leaning on the door frame to her room. He had opened the door but not come into the room. She'd not heard him knock but then, that would have had to compete with Brandon's laughing and squealing. Help me. She heard Brandon call out to his father. She may have looked up but was actually still tickling the boy. Saw Brad's eyes move towards the boy and shake his head. No it's good to see you two like this, so happy. I like it. Piper stood up and released the boy. Don't stop on my account, it was very cute. My family, all happy. What brings you by? Piper asked him. You Piper. Why else would I be here? I wanted to see you. My eyes were met with a wonderful sight to see. He was smiling right at her breakfast. Don't you have training? She sighed, already pushing her to go downstairs again. No, I've left Cooper in charge of that. She saw Izzy squeeze past him and into the room. He didn't move at all and she didn't seem to mind pushing past him. Did I miss, tickling the boy? I heard laughing. What? No. It was Brandon and his eyes were wide, then Izzy was after him. Piper could only smile at them. Poor boy never had a chance when they were all together, watched as Brandon climbed up and over her bed with Izzy in hot pursuit. He ran round the bed and then around the couch, Izzy chasing him only half-heartedly, letting him keep his lead, but her hands were out the whole time, wiggling her fingers at him, as he ran away laughing from her. After two laps around the couch, Brandon shot towards Brad, all arms out dotted pleading for the man to help him, it seemed. Heard Brad laugh and then watched him scoop the boy up step right into the room and popped him right up onto his shoulders to sit safely out of reach, and he was, the man was a good foot taller than both she and Izzy. Izzy came to a stop, hands on her hips. No fair she pointed a finger right at Brad you're too tall, and then came and dropped herself down on the couch next to Piper, who'd sat down to watch them. Does everyone get up so early here? Yes, Piper laughed. Izzy was not a dawn riser. Ladies, let's go and have breakfast. Brad announced, Duck son, he said to Brandon and stepped right out of the room with him. Chapter 64, Bradley POV It was a sight for sore eyes that was for sure. For both he and Benson alike, he'd knocked on the Luna Suites door after linking to his unit to get them to handle training today also asked them to get most of the ranked members out there for training. For although Brandon had been fine having dinner with him in the dining room, Aspen was not awake and most didn't come for dinner till nearly six and it had only been a quarter to five. They'd actually had a nice quiet dinner just the two of them, he'd not shown the boy around even though Brandon had wanted to, wanted Piper to be there. So they had retired early to his room shown him around before going back to the Luna suite, though Brandon had asked what a Luna was. They'd sat in the Luna suite and he'd explained to Brandon that a Luna was the mate of the Alpha, 
told him you mother is the Luna to this pack the boy had just stared at him and not really said anything. Brad had let it go, had helped the boy set up his PS5 and even played a few games with him. Piper was out completely it seemed, didn't matter how much noise either of them made laughing or teasing each other, she didn't even so much as flutter an eyelid. It bothered him a bit. But he'd let it go her heart rate and breathing were normal. Just sleeping deeply it seemed. Not getting an answer to his knock he'd worried that she had snuck off, so had opened the door himself to check they were still in there, couldn't use his hearing all the rooms here in the pack house had soundproofing, wolves mating got loud, no one needed to hear that. What he'd seen, Piper and Brandon laughing and playing together, was a beautiful thing to behold, she was tickling out of their boy. They both looked and sounded so darned happy, that his own heart was near exploding inside of his chest with joy. Every part of him ached to jump right in there and be a part of that moment, but he knew he couldn't, Piper likely would not take kindly to it just yet. But he was praying hard that one day soon he would be able to be a part of that family moment. He was watching his son and his mate full of joy and happiness, didn't seem to have a care in the world. Watching his own mate, be happy, really truly happy, and he knew she was. He'd seen them before, the way they were with each other, their own little world so to speak. But now to see it inside his very own pack. Something that Brad thought would take weeks or even months to happen, he couldn't stop smiling as he watched them. This was how it would be. How it should have always been he now knew this was also what he wanted. Piper was never getting away from him now. Not that he'd have allowed it before, but now, after seeing this, he wanted to see it every day. Wanted to wake up to it. To the sound of them both laughing. To the sounds of them being so very happy. Watched her blow that raspberry on Brandon's exposed tummy and nearly roared with laughter himself as all his little arms and legs were suddenly hitting and kicking at her to try and get away. She was not going to let him up. Brad knew that just from watching, she was having too much fun herself. He wondered what had started this little joyous moment he was watching. Heard Eddie and Izzy comment about the laughing they could hear, he was heading off to training as instructed, Brad was not going to training, wouldn't be needed to spend time as much time with Piper and Harper to grow their bond. To get her and her wolf to come around to he and Benson. Felt Izzy slide past him into the room, didn't even care, heard Eddie via the mind link that is good to hear. It is. Brad had returned. He chuckled himself when Izzy went to tickle Brandon herself, and chased him all over the room, he could see that even Piper was still amused and smiling didn't even stop her smiling with the knowledge that he too was right there in the room watching himself, didn't stop Izzy either from chasing the boy. Likely something else they all did on a regular basis. Brad loved that Brandon ran right over to him, arms out asking for help. He would finally help the boy, though only to get what he wanted. Piper downstairs for breakfast. He knew he was pushing her a little too fast. But a big part of him wanted the pack to see them together, and while she was all happy, was his best chance at getting her downstairs. He could sense Aspen's presence in his boy. The wolf himself had not surfaced at all, didn't try to stop him from picking up the boy or putting him up on his shoulders, seemed to be okay with him today. Maybe yesterday had helped, perhaps the bond he was creating with Brandon was filtering to the boy's wolf as well. He hopes so. Though it could simply be because Piper and Harper were not full of aggression at this moment either. Or in a state where they could not defend themselves against him. He wasn't sure which it was. Benson was also happy with all they'd seen this morning, they had heard Harper and Piper speak together teasing the boy, though she'd not been on the surface she was there and happy to. The first time they had seen anything that was not pure aggression come from his mate. He was happy to see his mate and son all right around them, and it did appear that way, 
both were present in their human counterparts they could sense them, and neither had surfaced or growled at him for being in the room or touching the boy. Harper had not growled or threatened him yesterday either, when Brad had put his hands on Piper, that they both believed was a good sign, seeing as she'd threatened practically everyone else about touching her, curiously enough Harry was still not on that list. Though that man had not once attempted to touch her at all. Watched her, spoken to her, but he'd mostly just stood back and done nothing. Made Bradley wonder about that comment on the plane. About being gamma-blooded and that he was just much more subtle in his way and use of it. Was glad to hear that both Piper and Izzy were walking behind him, hadn't really given them much choice in the matter but Piper could simply have stayed in her room if she had wanted to. Popped Brandon down on the ground by the elevator and let him press the button. He was not about to go walking Piper and Harper through the pack house as its members were all waking up and heading for training, wanted to get her to breakfast and out of the dining room before training was over and everyone piled on in, also didn't need Aspen freaking out or being overwhelmed by the sudden influx of ranked wolves allowed the three of them to step into the elevator before him, and hit the ground floor button, stood and watched Izzy and Piper, they were chatting while Izzy was going on about how Eddie's suite was plush and elegant and the colors and style were amazing, Piper was smiling at the woman, enjoyed seeing her friend so happy he realized. She seemed to just want everyone around her to be happy. Held his hand out to Brandon when the elevator opened and the boy took it without issue, made him very happy, every time that the boy was happy to come with him, even more so than yesterday or last night because Benson could sense Aspen was right there, which meant that his wolf was also allowing this to happen, a very good thing. There were half a dozen Omegas in the dining room, along with a dozen school kids that ranged from 5 to 18, those kids were getting breakfast, all ranked members' children, though only four of them old enough to have wolves. Their parents would be at morning training so they were here to have breakfast. Most of the night border patrollers were here too he noted all chatting and socializing after their shift, they all looked to him and nodded in greeting, also looked to Izzy and Piper as they headed for the buffet breakfast that was set up, they were currently walking in front of him, Piper knew where she was going and Izzy had likely been here for dinner last night. They both actually seemed quite comfortable to him. His patrollers looked from Izzy to Piper, and then bowed ever so slightly almost all in unison he realized, she just looked at them, kind of looked rude not greeting them back, but she just needed time to adjust. Only a few had laid eyes on either of them since they'd arrived. Though everyone was aware that his Luna had a son, most were not yet aware that the boy was his. Bradley could actually see it dawning on the adults, Though he was all Piper in looks, those eyes were Bradley's and the boy was looking at everyone right this minute not just the other children but the patrollers as well, he was also holding Bradley's hand as they walked into the room. Found one set of eyes right on him, a very confused look and then that confusion turned to apologetic right before his eyes he realized just what was going on. Kane, he was the border patroller who had reported Piper going rogue all them years ago. He hadn't been able to give a very good description of her, no real detail, no real surprise there, without her scent no one could recall much about her. The man had figured it out from the child that was walking with Bradley. Did the math real fast. Alpha, I'm sorry, my description, it's all right Kane, to be honest with you, I couldn't even recall what she looked like, none of us could he admitted to the man. A little sadly she's been found now, that is all that matters and it did. Bradley turned his eyes to her as she walked with Izzy to get some breakfast, Brandon let go of him to run over to them. Bradley loaded up a plate himself and then waved the three of them to a table and they all sat. He turned to his son Brandon, if Aspen starts to feel uncomfortable let me know, I'll clear the room. Saw those eyes just like his look up at him all right he nodded, but Bradley didn't hear any concern or worry in the boy's voice at this time. Perhaps Aspen. 
was indeed just protective and super aggressive due to his own mother not being able to defend herself so he had felt like he had to do it. Keep her safe from everyone inside this pack, a place they knew she did not want to be. But with her calm, he was calm. Bradley was hoping this was how it worked. Piper, Izzy do you want coffee, he asked. Saw Izzy nod right away I'll get it, I know how Piper likes it, where, oh never mind I see the, holy cow, now that's a coffee machine and she was up and gone from the table. Yes there was a really good coffee machine, a Jurajiga X8C and a barista standing right next to it to assist, for anyone who wanted coffee. That machine would make over two dozen types of coffee. Easy to use had a touch screen, was literally find the coffee you want and press a button. Cost a small fortune but his pack was worth it, it wasn't the only one in the pack house either, there was down with the movie theater and he actually had the same one in his office building in Helena. Only purchased them about six months ago. Watched as Piper shook her head. That girl does love her coffee. How do you have your coffee, Piper? Bradley asked, it was time to start learning about her, for them to get to know each other, they both knew very little about each other, though it was possible she knew more about him. Had been a pack member for 21 years, and he'd been the alpha since she was 17. Caramel latte usually or the occasional caramel mocha she actually answered him committed that to his memory. He was glad to see she seemed open to talking today. Caramel beans? Or syrup? Got a raised eyebrow from her but she answered syrup. He was going to make a list of all the things she liked to have, then make sure they were in his suite waiting for her when he won her over. Wanted her to know, he was not only interested in learning about her but had heard her and retained her interests as well. She was eating a pot of Greek yogurt with muesli with some fresh strawberries and blueberries on the top of it. Noted that it was not a lot of food, it was the only thing in front of her even Izzy's plate had more things on it as did Brandon's for that matter. Piper is that going to be enough for you to eat, he questioned her, didn't think it was going to be, she'd not had dinner last night should be starving. I ate earlier this morning, Cooper brought me a plate of food. That made him frown when I was up and going to get something, about 4.30 I think, he was already up, in the hallway, offered to go and get me something. Oh, he didn't say anything it was nice that he had, but odd that he'd not mentioned it at all. Piper shrugged, accepted the coffee Izzy handed to her, Izzy even put one on the table right in front of him, he looked at Izzy questioningly they had yet to actually speak to each other since Hawaii. Eddie states I owe you an apology, the young girl over there said you drink a double shot cap and made one for you when I asked her to. Thank you Izzy he nodded, it wasn't exactly an apology, and the woman did owe him and his wolf one, this was likely as good as it was going to get. Especially if she was their little Pax Beta, he was not going to get a verbal apology, because she had just done her duty. What do you drink, he inquired, would make the effort as she was doing. She would be a pack member at some point. They also needed to get along, Piper was right about that she was Eddie's mate. Latte macchiato. Like your coffee strong I see. Piper snort don't ever give the woman a straight cap or goddess forbid decoff. Disgusting things. No kick at all. Now a triple espresso. Izzy was grinning. Goddess don't ever let Eddie give her one of those, she'll be bouncing off the walls for hours. Bradley chuckled at Izzy's gasp of feigned offense, then she too chuckled, his eyes moved to Brandon now I know you like waffles the boy had eaten them after dinner and currently had a stack of them in front of him right now what else do you eat? Anything but vegetables. I won't touch them. Bradley had seen this himself, seen Izzy tease the boy with vegetables fruit, he asked yeah, most of it. Got a favorite. 
Hmm he shrugged I don't know he finally said round a mouthful of waffles. Bradley's eyes turned to Piper's, she would know, mangoes I'd say, followed by blueberries. He smiled at her, was happy that she was willing to interact with him and answer all his questions, seemingly without hesitation today. Was not actively avoiding him at all. Likely resigned to the fact she had no real choice at the moment. Was probably just trying to make the most of it, but he would take it as a win. Found his father and Lily dropped down into the other seats at the table along with Hadley. Didn't know if he liked that, though this was the Alpha's table and it was their norm, to sit together, but this would be the first time Hadley and Piper had come across each other since Portland. Saw Hadley look right at Piper, looked very nervous to him, watched Piper look right back at her morning Piper. Hadley said, though her voice seemed soft and cautious. Morning Hadley. I see you're all healed up. Yes, and I didn't get to thank you for saving me that day. Don't worry about it, you weren't the first, likely not going to be the last. Piper shrugged at the woman. Not the first. Bradley interjected, didn't like the sound of that. Saw her eyes move from Izzy to Brandon and ever so slightly shake her head. They didn't know he didn't know either, would have to discuss that with her, if she went about beating up rogue males on a regular basis, that had to stop. Too dangerous, what if her necklace came off or got ripped of, nope that was not something he was going to allow her to do. Discuss that later he muttered unhappy at the thought that she might have been out there putting herself in dangerous fighting situations on a regular basis. I see your boy. Eats like you Bradley his father commented, he was sitting on the other side of Brandon, the man just couldn't help himself. Had a grandson, always wanted one, now had one, and had sat himself right next to the boy. Smiled right down at the boy, saw Brandon look right up at him, then inch a little bit closer to Bradley himself, and heard his father huff, seemed annoyed by the boy's resistance to him. I'm not the biting type grandson, too old for that he opened his mouth and pointed to his human teeth look no sharp teeth in here. Heard Lily snort not in that mouth, but cold does. Shush woman, I'm trying to project friendly harmlessness, to my grandson, so he'll hug me already. Bradley could see Piper watching he's not good with alphas, never had a nice experience with any of them. I guess you could say she told his father. With any of them, how many had they run into? Would have to ask her that, if it was more than one and they were all mean and threatening it was no wonder the boy's wolf was aggressive. Well, I'm gonna change that. His father smiled right at Piper and then turned right to Brandon have you ever wanted to ride a wolf? Even Bradley shook his head at that comment. The man was going to pull out all the stops it seems, father I think that may be a bit much. Nonsense, you and your brothers, even Hadley there he waved his hand in the general direction of his daughter has ridden Colt around. He's happy enough to let Brandon, is our grandson. Could see Brandon's eyes widen you can ride on wolves? I'm too big to do that, they're like dog size right? Hmm, no son actually a lot bigger two or three times bigger, remembered that the boy had never actually seen his mother's wolf, though neither had he. Only had a written description. Felt sadness roll of Benson, they had no idea what Harper looked like, though it was highly likely they had seen her at some point during pack runs and training just didn't remember it, was making his wolf sad to realize this. They didn't even know if Harper could be brought back to full wolfen strength, at which she'd be able to shift again. Really? Brandon asked, was staring up at him. Yes, and if you're going to ride any wolf, it will be Benson not cold that was more for his father's information than Brandon's. Even felt Benson perk up a little, seemed to like the idea. It would also be a good bonding experience for the two of them if Aspen would allow it that was. Hey, that's my thing. 
Find your own his father shot at him now Brandon, you really want to ride cold he's the fastest wolf in the pack. Super fast. Bet he can't beat mum. Brandon shot right back. Saw Piper smirk but say nothing. Hmm, a match to be determined, once your mum's fully recovered. I'll accept your challenge young man, and when I win, and I will, you'll let me hug you. That's the deal, no take back cease. Deal. Brandon even put his hand out to shake the man's hand. Made his father very happy, grinned all stupidly happy. Seems he was insanely happy to have a grandson, turned and squeezed Lily afterwards all happy, Bradley watched the woman just shake her head as well as he did. Though he did wonder what Piper thought of the challenge their son was making for her to attend. Didn't seem all that fussed about it. Though it was likely she would issue a distance challenge and win by a long shot. Colt was indeed fast but only over short distances, he could likely beat her in a sprint but Bradley was certain there was no one in this pack that would outrun his mate in an endurance race. Breakfast was actually going really well he thought. Piper and Harper might not have ever wanted to come back to pack life, but it was a natural thing for wolves to be inside a pack. She didn't seem all that uncomfortable, seemed calm and settled and that smirk, he was pretty sure she liked a challenge, was in all likelihood thinking about putting her old alpha in his place. Bradley liked that she wanted to do that too. It meant she was going to be here to do so. Perhaps they were thinking about staying and just hadn't told him yet. Took a moment to settle his thoughts he was getting ahead of himself. Letting his thoughts run away with him. Needed to stop that train of thought, or he'd be trying to touch her before he knew it without realizing it. He doubted very much she was ready for him to be all over her, regardless of their bond being active. Chapter 65, Piper POV Piper watched as Hadley walked into the dining room. Her eyes met Piper's, though only briefly before the girl went and got food it appeared she was uncomfortable right this minute. Seemed she had to come and sit at the same table as Piper, must be the Alpha's family table, she realized. Hadn't really thought about it upon sitting down. Looked more than nervous to Piper now, as she sat down, it was pretty darn clear she did not want to aggravate or upset Piper in case she went to Brad with what she had seen earlier this morning. Piper had meant what she said to Cooper, she didn't care herself what the two of them did, but it seemed Hadley understood that at any given moment, for any given reason, Piper could out the two of them to Bradley. Found it somewhat amusing actually. It was in her tone as well. The girl was more than nervous, Piper didn't bring it up, she'd told Cooper it was none of her business, but now she wondered if Cooper had told Hadley what she'd said on the matter. It was likely. But she still had something on them if she needed leverage, looked right at the girl and wondered just how badly they wanted to keep their little secret. Alphas tended to do as they pleased, Piper was betting on it being Cooper not wanting to be found out, Hadley, being of Alpha blood, likely didn't care, could do as she pleased pretty much. Piper turned her attention to Alpha Benjamin. He was pushing his luck with Brandon. She had to warn him when Brandon edged away from the man. Piper didn't want Aspen rearing up and going the man and the boy inching away from him, let her know he was not yet comfortable with the very large man next to him. Alpha Benjamin was the same height as Bradley, but was actually bigger than him, muscle-wise, likely he still worked out all the time. Still probably trained several days a week. This was not a large pack and all who were capable, retired or not, were likely ordered into battle if there was a rogue attack. Or a rival pack coming at them. They had some pretty close allies if she recalled correctly from schooling, that could get here quickly, but till that help arrived they had to handle everything on their own. Life inside a pack, was not always just loved up wolves, it could be quite terrifying at times. She'd seen it firsthand, 
felt the pain of loss and had reported rogues on the move inside the pack itself. Trying to keep this from Brandon was a must at this point. She was going to have to sit him down and talk to him, explain just how important it was to keep Aspen inside of him, but if there was an attack, how did you do that? If he felt threatened in any way by a pack attack, it was likely that Aspen would just rip right out of the boy. Watching Brandon's reaction to the possibility of actually riding a wolf, she could see that he was a bit confused and then just saw amazed at hearing just how big they could get. Almost shook her own head when it seemed Brad and his father, Benjamin, were almost arguing over whose wolf he was going to ride. Piper didn't think she'd seen any child ride a wolf before. Wolves were proud creatures, and that could be seen as a weakness, that they were soft-hearted and not strong and fierce. Especially the alpha wolf, felt Harper actually huff inside her mind at there whose wolf he'd ride, seemed she was annoyed by it herself. Perhaps would have wanted that for herself. It was possible or it could just be that she didn't have that option open to herself when Piper tried to ask her got silence on the matter. Didn't want to talk about it. Found herself the center of attention at Brandon's bet he can't beat mum comment. This did actually amuse her as well as Harper, smirked to themselves at the memory of beating even the alpha of the pack just days ago. Then a deal was struck on her behalf, sighed internally as she watched Brandon shake that man's hand. The boy had just made his first alpha-to-alpha -alpha deal. Looked right at Brad who was just watching his son, who settled comfortably back into his chair after shaking Benjamin's hand, was back to eating his breakfast, some of his OR all of his weariness gone it seemed. Brad didn't seem bothered by this deal their son had just made. Perhaps she was mistaken in what she saw. It could be simply family rivalry she guessed. She didn't know. Felt a cold breeze blowing in from outside as a wolf opened and closed one of the doors to the outside area of the pack, and saw Brandon shiver a little, as she did. Curiously, Izzy didn't even notice it. Brought her mind to clothing and shopping. Brad, I need to take Brandon to get warm clothes, it's cold here. Saw the man's eyes turn directly upon her, a frown on his face knew exactly what he was thinking, it was clear for all to see, he thought she was going to use that as an excuse to run away back to Portland. If she was going to do that she would have done it at 4.30 this morning when she was the only one awake. I'm a bit cold, Izzy commented. Piper, I'd rather you didn't leave for now. Brad stated flatly. I'm sure you would. Will you have the three of us freeze? We were not packed for a winter trip. You were the one who decided to bring us here, without warning. No fighting in front of the boy. It was Alpha Benjamin, his tone seemed to brook no argument. Piper, I can send someone, a personal shopper to do that for you. Just give me your sizes, that's all I'll need. No, I am capable of doing this myself, I will do it myself in fact. More than capable of being out in the human world. She didn't have to take orders from Benjamin and would speak as she wanted. He could suck it up. Wait, wait, wait. It was Lily. Bradley, take the girl shopping yourself, all of you go. Wait for training to be finished and Eddie can go with you as well, your whole unit, if you want. Piper frowned at the woman, she did not need a babysitter or a gamma, or an entire unit to do some simple winter shopping. All right. Brad nodded after training is complete he agreed with Lily, then looked at Piper. I'll take you all shopping, we can make a day of it. She didn't need a day of it, but seeing as she'd been the one to bring it up and they did need winter clothes, didn't argue about it fine. I need to talk with Brandon today, before he comes across Timothy Avery. Saw the boy frown at just the mere mention of the man's name, but he said nothing. Timothy was roped into training this morning, for that very reason, Brad informed her. Good. 
She stood up, come on Brandon, you Aspen, and I need to talk. About. She heard Brandon ask as he got down from the table, also noted that Brad stood up as well, frowned right at him, but let it go. She was just used to doing everything on her own, and likely wasn't going to be like that with Brad around all the time. Why don't we use my office? It's quiet and no one will come in. Piper nodded and took Brandon's hand to wait for Brad to pass. She knew where his office was, across from the pack house front door. Also, knew you did not lead an alpha anywhere inside his own pack, least of all to his own office. He held his hand out to the boy and Brandon took it. She blinked as he stepped and they had to fall in step with him, saw the smile on his face before he looked away. She could well imagine how they looked right this minute. It pleased him obviously, Izzy, she called out, and got a full frown from him. I'm right here, no need to yell. The woman, it seemed, had gotten up to follow them even without being asked to. She needs to know as well, might help in a, situation. Piper answered his frown. Saw him just nod and then continue on walking. They were all just about to walk into his office, when she heard a woman call out Alpha Bradley. She turned as did he. The woman was older, had long grey hair braided down the right side and dangling over her shoulder, was wearing a simple pair of loose-fitting jeans and a plain pink t-shirt. Wait, please may I come in as well? Annabella, your elder. Brad stated calmly at her questioning look. She sighed no Timothy. At training, remember. Fine, she muttered, and walked off into his office, let go of Brandon's hand and he was off already looking around the office, such a curious nature. Though she supposed this was his father's office, he'd have heard that. Also knew the man would want him to take over one day. She'd told him as much. Was likely off to investigate what would be his one day. Saw the woman step into the room, looked right at Izzy and frowned, smelled her, twice even, then looked at Brad with a raised eyebrow. He just shrugged we don't know yet. Hmm, should be fun for you when she arrives the woman snorted, smiled right at Izzy, inclined her head slightly, then moved on. Brad frowned at the woman now. It was likely this Annabella was old enough to register what Izzy's wolf was, though Piper and Harper had no idea and Brad had just stated they didn't know either. It was curious, though she didn't seem to want to elaborate. Walked right over to Piper. My goodness look at you, you look just like your mother she smiled at Piper my name is Annabella, I'm your great grandmother. So I heard. Piper acknowledged, what is it you want? Just to help you understand what you and Brandon are. Apologize for not realizing you were orphaned and coming to collect you. I also have this for Brandon, for when he needs it she took a ring off her finger and held it out to Piper. It'll protect him, and don't worry about the fit. Its magic will adjust itself to fit him, like your pendant's necklace, your wolf would have worn it they are magically imbued to fit us and our wolves when shifted. Piper stared at the ring. It was made with the same stone as her pendant, she realized, and she did know her necklace had adjusted to fit Harper as well. She'd never taken it off, not even thought about it, not even on her first shift. She'd seen it on her mother's wolf knew it wouldn't break. Took the ring Brad told me already what I was. Good good. Annabella nodded, though I would have liked to do that myself. I guess, under the circumstances acceptable. Do you understand? I get it. Piper nodded we're here to tell Brandon, so his wolf will not emerge too early. If he does, Piper, it's okay. I'll come along with some of the other elders, we'll teach the pack in the ways of not always using their wolf and senses. It's how our entire pack runs, you and Brandon will be seen all the time. 
though you do smell like Bradley now and Brandon, she smiled at the boy, still smells like your kin, due to Aspen not fully emerging yet. Why don't you sit down and let me explain it to him? I'm very good at this, explaining to the children. Will you let me? Piper moved her eyes to the boy and blinked at him. She'd not been keeping track of him, the boy was in Brad's alpha chair, spinning himself around and around. Glanced at Brad worriedly. It's fine, he smiled he's happy and that is what matters. He's in your chair, she murmured. I can see that he actually chuckled it will be his one day. Then he just walked over and stopped the chair from spinning, son, come and meet Annabella, she's got something very important to tell you. Me? Yes, you. You're very special. I know. He grinned up at Brad and hopped off the chair. Piper sat down and before Annabella could start anything, educate Izzy on wolves and how they used their sense of smell for everything, she frowned a lot seemed to talk to Fade quite a bit and then said is that why Eddie smells so good to me all the time. Yes. Oh, man has been smelling delicious for two days now, driving me nuts. That'll be the reason why you can't say no to him. Wait, does he smell like that to everyone? Even Brad laughed now no, is he? One of those scents only you and Fade can smell, it's his own unique mate scent. Brad told her. Hmm, well how do I know which one that is? Well to me, Eddie smells like. Cedar and ginger, so whatever else you smell, is unique to you. Saw her giggle almost instantly as she realized what it was. Now keep that to yourself. Piper smiled at her, though had a feeling she would likely tell her at some point. Especially if she found it that amusing. Brad's unique scent was blackberries. No one else but her could smell that about him. Though now she wondered if they did because she smelled like him. Shook it off. But it's so funny. And all yours, he's your weirdo, remember? Izzy nodded all mine she smiled, really liked this about Eddie. Yes, always. Watched her lean back on the couch. I wonder what I smell like to him? Hey, can I ask him? Yes, of course. Piper nodded. Izzy seemed very happy with all this, smiling away to herself. Piper indicated for Annabella to sit and talk with Brandon now. The woman sat cross-legged on the floor with him right in front of her, and wove their lineage into a story like a fairy tale. There was a wolf and princess, her name was Iris, and this princess held a secret from all wolf and kind, one of the utmost importance. That she was the most desirable princess to all wolf and kind. No male wolf could resist her, she'd been locked away in her castle for years to keep her safe from those males. A witch had been brought forth to create a magical charm to hide her from all those wolves. That were not her goddess gifted mate. She had to wait many long years to find her wolf and prince, who was her mate. But because of the magical pendant, Annabella pulled out her pendant and showed him hers, her prince could not send her. He did not know that she was his mate. Princess Iris did suffer much pain and heartache, because he did not know who she was. She prayed long and hard to their goddess to give her away for only him to send her. Sadly there was no answer to her prayers. Filled with sadness, the princess could still not obtain her prince, until one day when she could not stand the suffering and pain any longer, she climbed to the top of a long hill within her kingdom, and on the night of a full moon, when she felt the closest to their goddess, she sat once more and prayed with all she had. Offered up her own blood to the moon goddess herself, begged with her head bowed low to the earth, cuts to both her arms as her blood seeped from her to the earth, her blood offering, as one last effort to obtain her prince stopped in her story and got to see him lean forward, wanted to know if it worked. And finally, her prince, 
his wolf, an alpha wolf with the strongest sense of smell, caught the scent of her blood and he hunted all over the kingdom, tracking the scent of blood and his mate, feared the worst for her. So much blood he could smell. His wolf raced him to the top of the hill to find his mate, so small and frail now, lying in the grass whispering words of prayer to their goddess to please bring her mate to her, to let him send her. His hand touched her hair softly and when she looked up there he was looking right down at her, saddened by what he heard, what he knew, she had been within his reach all this time and he'd never know. The princess looked up to her prince, unsure as to if he could smell her or if he had just come across her. She'd been before him many times to no avail. Her prince tilted her chin right up and he and his wolf laid claim to her mind they told her together. Finally, the princess had found the way for her mate to claim her. They could be happy now, be together, and they were, had many little pups. Iris and her prince's lineage still lives on to this day, there is a telltale sign to let this be known, a wolf, with white eyes. Like me and mum. Brandon exclaimed. Annabella nodded, then allowed her wolf to push forward and showed to him her own wolf's white eyes. We are all just like Iris, now little one, you will be the most desirable wolf, but you'll only want your mate, just like Iris did. So, when your wolf Aspen emerges fully, you too, will have to wear your own magical charm. I will. Yes little one, a ring to wear always. Your mum has it now for you and when you're old enough and you sent out your mate. Annabella smiled right at him and you're already so handsome. Oh and those eyes. Wow, like looking at the northern aurora, so special already. I bet you'll just have the most beautiful mate. Oh, but Brandon? How will you obtain her? Annabella asked him playfully. Did you listen carefully? Watched Brandon smile real big. My blood he yelled excitedly. That's right, though unlike Iris our princess, only a little blood is needed, one tiny nick, and your mate will come running right into your open arms. Piper watched him smile all happy. Sighed internally, wondered why her mother never told her that tale. It might have saved a lifetime of loneliness and pain to boot. Annabella really was good at explaining this to him, likely it was her job within her pack. Can I see my ring? Brandon turned to her now. Though Piper did not want that thing on her boy, not until it was absolutely necessary she did hand it over for him to look at it, he turned it over and around and then smiled right up at her it's the same color as yours mum. Mm, it is. She nodded and looked right at Annabella. His children. Not all children in the bloodline get the gene but any wolf with white eyes has it. So how do you figure that out before the child's wolf emerges? Ah, yes, a good question. That was a little more difficult to sort out but we did eventually. So now we Whitlock's shift for the first time inside, usually with either your mother or father, in a locked room. Then, if the wolf's eyes are white, a charm is given before leaving the room. And where does one get a charm from? From us, of course, my dear. We have many. They are not tailored to a specific person, but to the gene itself. It can be passed on and given to another. As you wear your mother's now. We will send you a pendant or ring for every child you have and Brandon's too, just in case they need it. We will always be allied packs, just call and ask. It sounded so very simply, to people who knew and understood that was. She really did hope there weren't any others out there like her. Annabella, she realized was not so bad, thank you for coming, talking to Brandon. I didn't really know how I was going to do this. I'm happy to come for all of your children Piper, explain it or you could pop on up to the Ice Moon Pack for a visit, anytime you like. Piper frowned at that, she did not particularly want to have to deal with Timothy Avery, 
not put Brandon in front of that man either. I beat him myself, just so you know. Your cousin Tim, as did his own mother and two sisters. She chuckled it was very humiliating for him, his own mother dragged him out into the middle of the pack and all the Whitlocks got to watch her beat her own son, their current alpha. One of our little Whitlock laws. You, my dear, might find those amusing to read. She let that one go, though she was happy to hear he'd gotten a beating for his behavior towards her and Brandon. You said not all children would get the gene it was Brad. No, Annabella shook her head, about one in every three or four nowadays, depends on the gene pool of the Whitlock mate, if it's weaker or stronger than the mate's. All right he nodded. Piper looked right at him with a raised eyebrow now. She knew why he was asking, she hadn't even made her decision yet and he was already planning more children it seemed. He just shrugged at her, a half smile on his face, likely thought it was amusing that she knew what he was thinking. Rolled her eyes. Join our Facebook and WhatsApp group for more updates, link is given in description, rest audio book will be continued in next episode.